All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little Golden State Warrior video. Joe Lacob did a, an appearance on 95.7 The Game. We'll talk about it next. But first, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle. Two locations, Emeryville and Corte Madera. Check them out. It's open seven days a week in both spots. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Get the brisket. Get the brisket chili. Say hi to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video also sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. All right, guys, I'm loving Underdog Fantasy. Um, and seriously, sign up using the link in the description and the promo code Krug, K-R-U-E-G. Type that in and they'll match you up to 100 bucks. Uh, Thursday night football this week, Jacksonville and the Saints. Here are my Underdog Fantasy picks. I'm going Chris Olave, under 62 and a half receiving yards. Travis Ntn of the Jags. Uh, going over higher than 63 and a half rushing yards. Derek Carr lower than 238 and a half passing yards. Alvin Kamara is back in the mix for the Saints. I have him lower than 53 and a half rushing yards. And uh, Jaguars linebacker Devin Lloyd, uh, the former Utah Ute, has been good. So I'm going to say Devin Lloyd higher than six tackles, combined tackles and assists for the linebacker from the Jaguars, Devin Lloyd higher than six tackles or assists. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Golden State Warriors. Uh, they play tonight against Sacramento. They're undefeated in the preseason. They open Tuesday night against the Phoenix Suns. And Joe Lacob was on this morning on 95.7 The Game with Bonte and Shasky um, in studio for a full hour, 8.30 to 9.30 this morning, talking about a number of different things. And let's just kind of go through it and react to it. Um, you know, one of the things that came up was Clay Thompson's contract. Uh, Thompson wants a new contract. Um, there's lots of reports. The Warriors want to keep him in a Warrior uniform for a long, long time. But what's his value? You know, what, what, what kind of player is he at this point? What do they want to pay him? What is he looking for? There's also speculation that he may wind up playing in Portland or with the Lakers. Um, you know, there's and, – and, and – I don't know exactly what the Warriors' plan here is, but he Joe Lake was asked about uh, Clay Thompson's contract this morning, and he says we want him back. We he wants to be back. We want him back. I think everyone needs to just chill a little. Let's let this take its course. My guess is it works out. So I think really more than anything, the Warriors would like to kind of just dip their toe in the water on Clay Thompson and see what he looks like. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, last year, Clay Thompson played in 69 games. He averaged 21.9 points a game, um, 4.1 rebounds a game, 2.4 2.4 assists per game. Um, and, you know, Clay Thompson's still a hell of a player. Played 33 minutes a night. Um, he's at this point, he's 33. You know, I think what you're going to see now is you're going to see Thompson play some bigger guys. He's going to play some small forward. He's going to defend some power forwards. You know, he's going to defend some forwards instead of just instead of guards. He's going to, the Warriors are going to play with the smaller lineups. Um, but you're still talking about a guy that, you know, shot 43 percent from the field, 41 percent from the arc, which is right on his career career numbers. His, his career numbers are he plays 32 minutes a game. That's what he did. His career numbers are that he shoots 45%. He shot 43.6 right there. Uh, his career three-point percentage is 41.6. He shot 41.2. So his career free throw percentage is 85.2. He shot 87.9. He rebounded better than his career average. His assists were slightly above his career average. Uh, everything that he's done is pretty much right on line with his career average. His career average points wise is 19.8 a game. Um, he averaged 21.9 a game. So he hasn't really slid back in any way except possibly defensively. Um, he doesn't have quite the same lateral agility as he had, you know, when he first came into the league. He's not going to guard point guards and two guards with regularity. Uh, at least not quite as well as he did before. But, um, you know, Clay has not really slipped. And, <clears throat> you know, Joe has made it clear he wants him back. So what's it going to take? I would say 30 to 35 million a year. That would be my guess. That's probably the neighborhood of. And I think the Warriors are paying willing to pay it. And I think Thompson is probably willing to, to accept it. Now, 
who knows? Maybe he wants 40 million a year, but that seems to be a little rich. And um, I think they just would like to take a look at how, what he looks like in the first 10 to 15 games of the year, dip their toe in the water and just see that there's no clear, you know, significant regression, which there probably will not be. I've seen him in the preseason. He looks good um, before they make the commitment. I mean, you're asking a organization to commit over a hundred million dollars for them to say, Hey, you know what? We'd like to take a look in the regular season for a couple of weeks. That's not a big deal. So I do think this gets resolved, but that was one of the major topics this morning. Um, also Joe said, Hey, I really want to see Steph and our guys get a fifth ring and beat LeBron to five. Um, you know, I don't know if that's possible. I really don't. I, I, I don't see this warrior crew winning another title, but you know, I've been wrong before. And I'll, I'll say this, the warriors just watching them in the preseason, they're getting older. And I, I mean, everybody's getting older. I mean, that's kind of a ridiculous statement, but you know, their core is getting further from their prime every day that goes by. But watching them, Kuminga looks amazing. And the depth of the roster looks significantly better than a year ago. So maybe they will be better positioned. And who knows? Maybe the right series of, of injuries to Denver or some of the best teams in the league could make this more of an even playing field. Um, the one thing that you can say about Golden State with St- under Steve Kerr, they don't fracture as the season goes on. They tend to stay together. They don't grow apart. They tend to continue to get better, 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 where a lot of teams in the NBA do fracture. And, and, you know, the the 82 game regular season wears on teams. And then there's the injury factor as well. So how well you navigate the regular season could determine if they're a realistic title contender or not. We won't really know until April or May. But um, Joe is is hoping for that fifth ring and uh, they're going to make a run at it. Um, Joe also commented on opening night, you know, the, the Phoenix Suns and Kevin Durant are in town and he kind of almost pleaded with the fans to give KD a good response. If there was going to be any booing, he's like, he doesn't want to see that. He goes, I want to say this to all of our fans. It needs to be, it should be, and it will be a tremendous ovation for a guy that helped us win two world championships. I have nothing but the highest regard for him. So, you know, Joe wants that to be. Um, a great night for KD as he should. He wants it to be nothing but positive. And I hope that KD has been gone now long enough where the fans could have a little perspective on this and understand that what they saw was one of the all time greatest players playing some of his greatest basketball and winning a couple titles Um, and, and cheer him accordingly on opening night. But Joe wanted to put that out there for the fans. When he was asked about Steph Curry, he said, what he's done for this organization, I can't even put into words how much I admire him, respect him. He's a phenomenal human being. I want him to be with us, our organization, for a very, very long time, even beyond his playing years, which I would expect nothing less, but it was great to hear. Um, Steph Curry is a warrior, and he's always going to be a warrior, and he's going to be a significant face of the Warriors probably until his dying days. And if, and he's definitely going to be a, uh, he's going to have his own statue. He's going to be respected and, and revered uh, in every way imaginable for the rest of his life here in the Bay Area as a warrior, as a great warrior, as, you know, arguably one of the greatest warriors. So, um, you know, and, and that was great to hear. So, and, and we all expected that, but it was great to hear Joe say it. And then Joe on Steph Clay and Draymond, he said, I'd love more than anything to keep those guys here through the entirety of their careers. And we're going to try to do that. So, you know, this was the big question with Joe. He's a self-made billionaire. And sometimes you got to make cold, calculated decisions to be, to reach that level of affluence. And would Joe be the guy kind of like Bill Walsh? Hey, let's get rid of a guy a year before they're done. Or was he going to try to go to the finish line with Steph Clay and Draymond? And, and we know that Joe would like to continue winning titles. Uh, we know he wants those turnstiles to keep churning at, uh, you know, at chase. So, and he said, I would love, m- love more than anything else to keep those three guys here. So he's made that perfectly clear. Now the question is, can his two, can his two goals match up? Can they get that fifth ring and keep three guys making huge money 
past their prime all the way till the end of their career, never move off of any of the three and still win a title. That's going to be tricky to do because you're talking about a huge financial commitment as the, as the years go by to three guys that by definition are getting further away from their prime and are going to have, you know, less and less, you know, lower and lower numbers you would think, but that was interesting. So it's like, if you thought Joe was going to be, Hey, get rid of him a year too early instead of a year too late. Or if he was going to be sentimental, you got your answer. Joe's sentimental. Um, and then he commented on the Chris Paul Jordan pool trade. He says, I think this is a great move. I'm extremely excited about this team. So I think this is a great move, whether Chris Paul plays well or not. I think it's an I think Joe's right now in, in October hoping that Chris Paul, who looks awesome, by the way, in the preseason. He's in great shape. He's in great spirits. Um, he makes them a, a lot smarter basketball team. He's going to take care of the basketball. He knows how to play. You know, if if he can get a full year out of Chris Paul playing at this level, then he's excited. I think what Joe didn't say there is that he's excited that that he's got an asset in Chris Paul that he can pivot off of easier than he could have pivoted off of Jordan Poole's bloated contract, considering Poole doesn't play any defense um, at all. So, and and they paid him a huge sum of money. So I think, you know, Joe is excited for a couple of reasons. I think he's excited for what Paul brings to the Warriors and and what he can contribute to them winning a championship. But then if it doesn't go well and Paul isn't necessarily what they wanted or if he get breaks down or whatever, his expiring contract at $30 million with the, the nature of the value of an expiring $30 million contract period for anybody is easier to move than a bloated contract for a one-way playing two guard like Jordan Poole. So I think he understands that the Chris Paul contract is a greater value asset than Jordan Poole's contract. And ultimately in the NBA, that's what you're doing. You're moving contracts. Uh, But he also loves the idea of Chris Paul and what he can bring to the Warriors competitively and how he can contribute to potentially them winning the fifth ring. And then he also was asked about Dwight Howard. And I thought this was kind of an interesting answer too. Joe admitted that he loves Dwight Howard and that there was a time where he really, really badly wanted Dwight Howard to be a warrior, but that they reviewed it and the, you know, the players reviewed it and the, the front office reviewed it and they've kind of decided they don't want Dwight Howard. So, and this, this, even though it was kind of a, you know, of the topics, it was just kind of a throwaway topic. Um, to me, I thought this was really interesting because it kind of shows that, What kind of owner Joe is Joe has strong feelings about basketball and strong feelings about players that he likes, but he's not going to overrule everybody in the room. He's not going to come in and say, well, the players don't want him. Don't think he's a fit. The front office doesn't want him and doesn't think he's a fit. Well, who cares? I'm the owner and Dwight Howard's here. And to me, that was very revealing of why Joe is such a good owner. He's committed. He's passionate, but he's not ludicrous he's not maniacal he's not he might be difficult to deal with if you're the general manager because he calls and he's got lots of questions and he's always involved and and you know he's very hands-on but he's not gonna he's not gonna say hey you know what nobody else wants this i don't care i'm doing it anyway and sometimes you get the feeling with you know the steinbrenners of the world in yesteryear or jerry jones that some some of these owners get to the point where hey it's my way or the highway and my impulsive nature uh, rules the day. And it's pretty clear that Joe, you know, was the push behind Dwight Howard at, all, at every stage that the Warriors have considering considered signing him or trading for him even this year. Um, but that he's not going to just demand it and he's not going to overrule his basketball people or his players um, just to make it, you know, make it a reality. I thought that was actually kind of a, kind of a key moment today. Um, great job, by the way, by Bonte and Shasky doing that interview with Joe Lakeup. I thought it was fantastic. Um, check it out. I'm sure at 95 7's website and on the Odyssey app, uh, thanks to pig and a pickle for being the title sponsor of the crew show. Thanks to underdog fantasy. Make sure you use that link in the description, use the promo code Krug and they'll match you up to a hundred bucks. Thanks to all you guys for supporting 
The Krug Show on YouTube.